that will give you an idea as to tonight's topic on anthracite horror stories. It's a slightly different type of story than I've been doing recently because it's tied into current events, unfortunately. As of March 9, 2022, in Ukraine, uh, as you probably already know, the Ukrainians are offering an absolutely fierce resistance to the Russian invasion by both the Russians, Chechnyans, and soon to be Arab, Syrian um, regime forces that fought alongside the Russians in Palmyra and all throughout Syria. Uh, unfortunately, we have never been closer to nuclear war, in, in my opinion, ever. Uh, a lot of the news pundits are saying since the 80s and the Cuban Missile Crisis in the early 60s. Being a historian, I, I personally feel as though this is, this, we are on the precipice of possible nuclear war. And that is not good for anybody, obviously. Uh, especially me living, you know, less than 30 miles from a nuclear power plant. Those are on the strike lists. Um, so that would be hit with an air burst where they detonate it a few thousand feet over the facility. And yeah, that would be bad. It would be uninhabitable here for 30 to 50,000 years. Um, so again, Ukrainian forces are currently um, fighting an amazing defense against, against this, this Russian military onslaught. And the great unknown currently at the moment is what happens? What, what is Putin's end game? Uh, if he loses, does he, he go nuclear? Um, if we're sending war material as we currently are, does he go nuclear? If he conquers Ukraine, which it's not looking like he may, uh, because at, at best there's going to be a horrible insurgency there in all these big cities. Uh, the Russians are actively getting decimated in addition to the Ukrainian civilians and defense forces, but the Russians are really getting it. Uh, you can look on YouTube and see all the tanks with the Z's on them and the O's and the V's, um, which designate their Russian route most likely where they came in, but but they're 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 getting destroyed. No one fathomed that, even Putin. But if he even does conquer Ukraine, does he next move on to Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic, Estonia, Latvia, uh, Finland, Sweden? He's even threatening Finland and Sweden with military action if they join NATO, and they're expressing a desire to join NATO. So again, I, I'm rambling here, but tonight's article came up in a random Google search. And I've been posed this question by people over the years. And it's an interesting one. Would coal mines, primarily anthracite ones obviously here, be a good place for fallout shelters from a nuclear holocaust? And that's an interesting question. It, it truly is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read this article. I'm gonna link the original source. They dissect this article uh, in more detail, but they pulled up, I, I assume from newspapers.com, a January 2, 1951 newspaper clipping from the Plain Speaker, and that is a Hazleton newspaper. It's pretty cool. It's entitled Coal Mines as Bomb Shelters. So again, 1951, the mines were still open underground in Hazleton, like the Hazleton shaft colliery uh, was closed in November of 1960. So deep mining was still, um, it was in, in decline obviously in the 50s, but it was still very, very active. So I'm gonna read this article instead of just reading the article all at once, cause it's a pretty short article, only a couple paragraphs, and then dissecting at the end. I'm gonna dissect it as I'm reading it. So when I want to add something to it, or my thoughts, and I'm, I'm not a nuclear physicist or uh, a chemist, I, I'm not too familiar with nuclear fallout, luckily, and I want to keep it that way. But I will, you know, say, okay, I'm gonna continue with the article. 
um, after I'm done giving my two cents. But the article starts as, some fantastic ideas are being ad advanced in connection with the possible use of abandoned hard coal mines as bomb shelters should there be war with Russia. Isn't that funny how history repeats itself? I mean, war with Russia, here we are, 2022, who'd have guessed? Here in 1951, um, the Cold War was just really ramping up. The article continues. The question is being considered by some civil defense councils, it is said, but it is extremely doubtful whether the plan would work. The suggestion that old mine workings could be converted into shelters stems from New York, where the subways would afford considerable protection. Proposal proposals for such shelters have reached the stage where New York authorities may request a federal loan for financing the project. Some mining authorities say that with a reasonable outlay for ventilation and sanitation, anthracite mine workings that are no longer operative might be available for shelters, but the big obstacle is how they could be reached in case of an attack. It would be necessary for people to go through deep shafts, which if closed, would make them death traps. The workings are not centrally located and to let persons down in cars is a slow process when it is taken into account that thousands would want to get into the underground chambers. Most of these old workings have caved in and might be as much of a menace as the effects of an atomic bomb. I love that line. It says, most of these old workings have caved in and might be as much of a menace as the effects of an atomic bomb. So, ventilation, I'm, I'm going to touch on that real quick. If you were to go into an abandoned anthracite mine, there would be, when, when these mines were operating, and you know, it's back in 1951, so if these were recently abandoned, there could be 20, 30, maybe even 40 ways air could get in. These are air shafts, old manways, slopes, drifts, tunnels, vertical shafts, just cave-ins. If, if you're going to go into a fallout shelter, what happens is when a nuclear bomb is detonated, it depends on a whole array of atmospheric conditions, weather, the way the wind's blowing, the type of bomb, I think it goes like I'm having kilotons of explosive, um, the size of the bomb, obviously, then. But it, it, there, there's just so many variations. So what nuclear fallout is, it's the material from the bomb, from the plutonium, the uranium, whatever. And it just falls down on Earth. And it coats everything. Now that could last anywhere from, from what I was reading, days, weeks, months, or years. So you have to stay out of the fallout because, <laughs> like nuclear ash. And it starts to degrade quickly, but again, it depends on when variations in the type of bomb. So if you're trying to go into an anthracite mine, you would have to make that airtight. So I think what they were trying to propose would be to get into the coal mine. Then and only then would you be channeled to a bunker that would be airtight, It'd be like a, a sealed off concrete bunker. Now ventilating that would be absolutely Herculean. Sanitation would be absolutely Herculean. I guess you could do some sort of water filtration with the natural aquifer down there, but it's going to be contaminated with PCB oil from the old transformers. Of course, you're going to have your acid mine drainage. You're going to have all types of mold issues. But now ventilating that, who knows how they would have done that. I guess they could have just channeled air throughout the mine and before it got to the bunker, you know, they could have cleaned it through filtration, etc. But they said here also, thousands of people would be fighting each other in a sense to get underground, and you'd have to manly lower people down, and that these mines were not centrally located. And that is very true. A lot of these mine entrances, uh, especially back then, now not so much because it's built up more, a lot of warehouses over mines now, um, but a lot of these were on outskirts of town. So wh what are you going to do? Get in your car, walk a few miles, you know, oh, hey, the, the, the hydrogen bombs, the thermonuclear bombs are coming and just wait 
in line at the tunnel entrance or the vertical haulage shaft and they just lower you down like a elevator, you know, in groups of 10 or 12 or whatever it would be. So it didn't seem too practical. And they were already saying mostly the old workings have caved in and were as much a menace as the effects of atomic bomb. Anyone that's ever been in an abandoned anthracite mine would know what a menace it is from black damp to the cave-ins to whatever. And I'm gonna tell you right now, especially with all the pillars being robbed, a lot of that roof was ready to cave in, either already caved in, or just from the effects of that massive blast. I couldn't imagine an air burst nuclear bomb. Let us knock on wood. Let me go find a piece of wood here. Superstitious. Knock on wood. We don't have to experience this because <laughs> this is a very bad time to be alive. And I don't care what anyone says. This is uh, very scary times. But the blast would definitely rattle those mines. There'd be all types of cave -ins. So if you even do get into the abandoned anthracite mine inside of the bunker, inside of the anthracite mine, if there's cave-ins, uh, real bad ones, you're gonna be entombed. So you're gonna be like uh, the twin shaft disaster that I had on here. You might survive the initial blast, but guess what, 360 degrees around you, maybe it's, it's just horrendously collapsed. And yeah, now you're cut off from your air, cut off from your food, you're cut off from your communication. Everybody's dead up top. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're not getting rescued. You're just gonna die two, three, four, 500 feet underground. So I do agree that the uh, mine itself could be just as big of a menace as the atomic bomb. Now the article continues. Along with the shelter idea for the populace, the suggestion has been Renewed that mine shafts may uh, be made suitable for housing of industrial plants and production of defense material. This has some elements of feasibility, but otherwise they would offer nothing really practical as security against the bomb. And basically they're just talking about how uh, industrial facilities such as uh, defense, you know, like Boeing or weapons manufacturers like Northrop Grumman or uh, Raytheon, you know, take your, your pick, General Dynamics. Uh, they could house their facilities under uh, ground in abandoned anthracite mines. That's actually a pretty good idea, like production. That would not be a bad idea. The Germans did that a lot. The Germans actually ramped up production, believe it or not, from 1944 to 1945. They were increasing production, even though all the allies were bombing the living hell out of them uh, because they got so good at protecting their production. And obviously the Japanese digging into the earth uh, on Iwo Jima, uh, etc. Um, that, that's that same thinking. That, that's what they were learning those lessons from. So from like a production standpoint, yeah, it, an anthracite coal mine would be good if you retrofitted it for production. You can reinforce it with steel I-beams, concrete, ventilation. But as a bomb shelter, no, I do not think that it is feasible at all. Um, in fact, say, say if you are underground in an abandoned anthracite mine exploring, currently, 2022, it's not a bomb shelter. Uh, you don't know there's going to be a nuclear bomb, you just happen to be going down there and exploring. And there was a nuclear blast. Uh, pretty much the air would be sucked out of the mine. Black damp would be the least of your issues at that point, but it, 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 essentially you'd be asphyxiated because the fallout, the nuclear radioactive material would come in and, you know, kill you. You'd be protected from the gamma radiation bursts. Uh, you wouldn't be incinerated. You would survive the blast, but you would be killed off real quick just from the, the fallout. The nu nuclear fallout is just absolutely terrifying. That's the worst part of it all, in my, in my opinion. Um, now, the one mine tour, this has collapsed many times over uh, the Glenburn mine in Shemokin, they actually had civil defense rations in there, and that was a fallout shelter, shockingly. Um, if you Google it, these people in 96, I believe, or 98 took photos, and they were, the rations were all eaten through, but they had those civil defense water cans and civil defense 
cracker tins and they were strewn all about the mine and they said rats ate them. But yeah, there was a fallout shelter um, in the early 1960s, I believe they put it in there under uh, Route 61 there in Shemokin. And that, that mine was pretty cool because that was, oh God, 1840s, 1850s up until like 71 or 72. And then they even ran an independent operation there in the 80s and 90s. But unfortunately it collapsed. And they actually had an active mine tour while it was still producing coal. You could go there and it was a six mile electric mine motor ride throughout the mine. Six miles. So it just gives you an idea. Um, so for Shemokin at least, they did have uh, at least a, a storage for food and a quick fallout shelter. I don't know how practical it would have been. I don't know what their ventilation practices were, would have been. But yeah, I, I don't think I'd want to be in a mine. Um, that, that would suck. Uh, the only thing I can think of would be for, say, like Wilkes-Barre or Scranton to just dig into the earth because you have to you have to be in the earth for uh, fallout to not affect you. So if you de literally just dig into the ground, concrete it, ventilate it, um, again, water, you have to figure out, you know, stocking the bunker in a sense or whatever. But if you just put these bunkers inside of a centrally located part of town and covered it with clay and dirt to protect from fallout, that would be a much more practical um, way to possibly give the population some semblance of safety. But honestly, the Russians now have hypersonic missiles. It's like 4,000 plus miles an hour. Uh, you can't shoot them down really. 4,000 miles an hour from Russia, that would take mere moments. So, <laughs> I don't know what kind of warning system. Uh, I don't, I unfortunately, I fortunately think if, you know, there's to be nuclear Armageddon, there's not gonna be much of a warning time. So, good luck. But I definitely wouldn't wanna be running out of my house with my family, maybe a pet, and back in the day, running up to a, a vertical head frame. It's a pretty cool idea, but <laughs> not practical. Waiting in line, getting ready to be lowered down the shaft, because you know the bomb's gonna hit then. And it's just gonna sever the cables or something, you're gonna fall to your death, or you'll be walking in the tunnels and all of a sudden the, the blast enters the tunnel. And that, that's another thing, these blasts probably would enter the tunnels. How would they seal off the slopes? How would they seal off the drifts? If you're in a, if you're near a slope or a drift, the freaking blast is gonna go boom. It's gonna enter down there. It's gonna shoot down that mine. It's gonna just cause instant cave-ins, probably for a mile. Just be absolute hell on earth. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. But uh, let us hope that we have, uh, avoid World War III here. Um, a lot of people think we may be already in World War III. So, we'll see what happens. Good luck. Stay safe.